Hey guys, it's Matthew. Um, coming in this time from uh, the Incursion League. Uh, this is going to be an extremely in-depth guide. A very long video. If you're not in it uh, f for the long run, I'm sorry. This video is probably going to last for a long time. I'm doing this uh, from a little break from mapping. So I decided to make a video on how I made currency this league. Uh, league's been going on for r roughly a week, or a week and one day, something like that. That being said, I didn't play on the second day of the league at all. I had a lot of things to do. Uh, remember guys, I do have a day job. I work uh, 40 hour weeks. I have a girlfriend, so my, my, you know, my free time isn't, I'm not playing the game 12 hours a day is what I'm trying to say. And yet, it's still really easy to make many, many, many exalts every single day. Well, many, many might be a little bit much, but quite a bit of exalts every single day. Anyways, so as I said, this is going to be a pretty in-depth guide. We're going to go over the build. We're going to go over the gear. Why these choices? We're going to go over the, the tree, the ascendancy class. We are going to go over the strategy. We're going to go over incursions and the temple. So we are going to go over a lot of things. So I guess the first thing, first things first, I guess the... The beginning of the video would probably to prove you guys, or to show it to you guys that I know what I'm talking about, at least a tiny bit. So currently, I've made about a hundred exalts. I want to say ish, hundred exalts. Uh, this league with this strategy. Um, I started off pretty slowly. Getting to Blood Aqueducts took a long time because this was my actually my my first time actually leveling as a ranger as a first character so no leveling uniques uh nothing like that so it took a long time and i also switched to tornado shot way too early which was really bad i couldn't do any incursions until i got like my tabula after blood aqueducts it was really bad so my first maybe like 12 hours of gameplay was just really 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 bad and then the following uh 12 hours probably again was really bad <laughs> anyways but we got it up we got it running and now we're starting to roll in the monies so I said 100 exalts it doesn't really look like much right now I have only like five exalts pure 100 chaos it's not a whole lot I do have a wind herper here that's worth a few exalts I have a few exalts worth of currency um, eh, let's just say 12 exalts on this tab or something give or take uh, then we have, uh, let's see, what do we have again? Uh, we have these, these are worth about two exalts each, so that's another ten exalts there. Uh, we have a two exalt ring, etc, etc. We have two six links, we have our, uh, our plus two additional, uh, projectile devotos, which is another, like, ten, fifteen x, depends really. It's pretty f fluctuating. So anyways... About 100 exalts, give or take. It might be 90, it might be 110, it might be 80. Who cares? The point is, it's quite a bit of currency for a week of playtime. And as I said, only playing... I mean, I'm saying only, but it's still a few hours a day. But we're going hard. We're going... Uh, we're going intensively. You treat the game like it's a job, and the game's going to pay you back like a job would. Uh, that's my philosophy when I'm mapping. I go hard. I don't waste time. I'm not picking up. Uh, I'm not picking up any rares. I'm only picking up six sockets, currency drops, uh, things, things of that nature. Things that I know are actually pure currency. I'm not going for the gambles. So that's the way we're mapping. I might do a little video next on show you guys how I run my burial chambers so as I said burial chambers that's our Atlas strategy here um, the only t3 we have is burial chambers that is it no other t3 no t4 whatsoever how we do that is we uh, shape relic chambers to a t9 so then the only t3 or t4 that drops is always burial chambers which means you basically have infinite sustain which allows you to sell a ton of maps and i'm not even at 100 percent um uh atlas bonus because i've been really lazy but if i get to 100 percent it's going to be like way better but it's still good enough to the point where i can sell uh 
two to three hundred Brilliant Chamber maps every single day because every map you run gives you about 1.5 Brilliant Chamber back on average and that is without the incurs uh, the temples, the map room, and without cartog cartographers and whatnot. So all that being said, basically you're just drowning yourself in burial chambers. So that's the Alice strategy. What we're going for is uh, uh, the doctor card. Oh yeah, that's where like 30 exalts of my currency are in the doctor cards. So 30, let's see, 45, 55, 65, 75, 80, 90. Yeah, about 100 exalts worth of currency this league that I own right now. Not that I have in pure, but that I own. So it's it's pretty pretty good amount. So we're going for Dr. Drops, we're going for the Big Bucks cards, but uh, even without Dr. Cards, running uh, just all can go on Burial Chambers, and then some t whenever uh, my item quantity roll is really low, like in the 40%, I just go ahead and corrupt them for a chance at these kind of maps, like 110%, and sometimes they go Relic Chambers, so you just lose them. Sometimes they just die, uh, and they get something like... Ele elemental reflecting and whatnot, so you can't run them, but you know, I think uh, on average it's worth it. And I'm selling my burial chambers for one val each, so like I sold like 50 earlier, so that's 50 vals, which basically means, like I said, I'm getting 1.5 burial chambers back every map. If I'm selling those for basically 1.5 vals, uh, in the end, I'm just basically never running out of either vals, burial chambers, alchemies, or anything else because I'm not chiseling my maps I'm not using uh, apprentice sextants I only use them whenever I'm, I'm running low on maps L let's say I sold a bunch and then uh, my tab is really empty like right now I might do a few runs with uh, some sextants like one white sextant on the map itself it's good enough to get me quite a bit of uh, map returns on top of what I normally get, which means more vowels in the end, which means uh, better maps, more juicy maps. So that's it for that strategy. Now I think uh, we're going to go over the character and the gear. Uh, so the character is a dead eye. Uh, reason for that is just because speed mostly, clear speed, and also just a lot of damage. And uh, a lot of speed, like like a crazy amount of speed. Reason for that is because of tailwinds. You know, we're we're running Queen of the Forest. We're getting forty five thousand evasion. I'm gonna go over everything in the video, but all you gotta know is normal lab you get gathering winds, uh, cruel lab far shot, merc lab endless munitions, and then just finish off with fast and deadly. You can change that though and go fast and deadly second, and then far shot, and then endless munition I think it's not that big of a deal but you know it's your choice but gathering wins is basically what you go for first the tree looks something like this uh, we're t putting a lot of emphasis on getting jewel sockets because that's a lot of damage uh, we're getting every single movement speed uh, node that we can that is available close then we're fo uh, we're getting quite a bit of intelligence and strength from the tree because we're going to need those uh, for our gems, which I'll go over a bit later. We're running Winter Spirit because uh, we're trying to convert all our damage to cold for the Wind Ripper effect. It's not necessary. You're not going to start off with Wind Ripper. You can start off with the Chinsaw. That is great. That's what I did for a while. Chinsaw was really good on bosses as well. Oh, uh, man. Sorry about that. Uh, making video, bro. One sec. Uh, all right. Sorry about that. I'm not even gonna edit it out because I'm just lazy. The only thing mandatory on the tree is the Lion Eyes Fall Jewel. Reason for that is because it turns your claw nodes over here into bow nodes, which gives you a crap ton of crit chance and crit multi, and more importantly. Attack damage leech and attack damage. Uh, I mean, sorry, attack damage leeches life and mana, which is really strong. Then we're going full crit and getting life nodes whenever we can. So the gear looks like this. I'm sure if you ever play this game and you see a build like this, you're going, "Oh no, what about your res? What about your resistances?" Well, we are not currently capped on our resistances, almost, but not quite. Our fire resistance is at 74, lightning 74, and or sorry. Uh, yeah, Lightning 74, but our cold resistance is pretty high up there. 
Reason for that is because we're running a T3, which is Burial Chambers, and you're freezing everything, so nothing's really going to hit you. So being like overcapped isn't not necessary. Get as close as you can to 75, like cap, but you don't need to go overcap because we're going to run a Curse Immune Flask, which is up 100% of the time, which basically means uh, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, um, any curses that would lower your element, your resistances or whatnot or anything that would make you slower either. It's pretty much a mandatory flask. I would not take that out because temp chains is AIDS and um, LA weakness is AIDS. There's a lot of pretty AIDS curses. So this is going to take care of all of them. So you just all can go. Just never, never get slower. Never go always as fast as possible. Always just rip them through the map. So how are we going to get our elemental resistances, uh, is what I was saying. So we do get a fair bit uh, from this. Notification gives you 8 all res. Afterwards, we're getting a little bit from uh, survivalists. It's 8 all res, and then 3 and 3. So this this little pack of notes here gives a 14 all res, which isn't all that bad. We're, gonna just, we're not going to spit on that. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, um... Not these, not these. I can't remember. Where is it again? Uh, I know this one does. Yeah, this is 10 RS. It's not bad. And then I got 18% uh, cold here and 18 lightning. I don't really need the cold, but it gives me a jewel socket. So I had to go for it. I wish the fire and cold were inverted, but it's not the case. So 18 and 18 for two, uh, two points is pretty decent. And then you can fix some reses resistances with your jewels such as this like 13 lightning because my lightning was just really really low so i just aimed and got myself a little bit of lightning res all my other jewels though are damage based um damage 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 point is we're trying to go as fast as possible the build only is 3.2 thousand hp which can be a problem but like i said you're freezing everything and as you can see i've already cleared like some higher tier maps like i've done a mal uh, malformation which is the t13 with full mf gear not a single death, killed the boss, no problem. It's it's 3000 HP, it's not a lot, but it's actually still okay to the point where you can actually clear T10s really safely with that much HP just because your raw amount of just cold damage, which is just freezing everything on your screen. So that's really nice. So that's it for the tree. Now we're going to head over to the gear. So I guess we'll start off with flasks. Uh, seasoning Divine Life Flask of Heat. We're going to need a freeze flask. It's mandatory. And um, you could drop the life flask and go for something like a dying sun. But I think, I think the damage isn't all that necessary at this point. So I just went for a Seething Divine Life Flask. Because it gives you a little bit of life. 3.2k is not a lot like I said. So uh, whenever we can... We're going to want to uh, definitely have this to save our ass uh, here and there. It's pretty, pretty important. Then we're going to get a Chemist Jade Flask's Reflexes. Uh, reason why I went Chemist, mm, there's none. It's just whatever. It could be anything else. But Reflexes is really strong because that is basically what it will help us reach 45,000 evasion for the Queen of the Forest movement speed boost. We're going to go over that later. Uh, Alchemist Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline is a must. You cannot replace this with anything. This is basically going to give you a shit ton of movement speed, and you want this for sure. It's crazy. I went with a Silver Flask of Staunching. You need a Staunching Flask, but it doesn't have to be a Silver Flask. It could be anything, but you're going to need a Bleed Flask somewhere in your kit because you're, you're going to die to bleeding all the time, especially with that much HP. And to final, uh, to you know, end it, you're gonna need a diamond flask for sure because crit chance is basically what's gonna help you freeze everything. So this is gonna help a lot with the freezing. And I went with warding for curse immunity, like I said, because we're not even Ellie, we we're not even um, capped on our ele elemental resistances. So if we were to run a map that was Ellie weakness, on top of not having any resistances, we'd just get slaughtered. So this is up 100% of the time, because we're going extremely fast. Wow, I don't even have quality on this. That's my bad. That's fine, though. Uh, gloves are going with Sedima's Touch. 
Uh, reason for that is 16% quantity. Do not get anything under 16% quantity. Uh, just get 16% quantity. It's like two chaos or something. Maybe even one chaos. Maybe even an alchemy. Just get 16% quantity. Don't don't go any lower than that. They're super cheap. They're easy to get. Uh, if you can get a plus one to um, to socketed gems, that's pretty good. It's gonna give you herald vice to level 21. And if it's 21, then 22, which is really strong on uh, in terms of damage, it gives you a lot of damage. Belt of choice for me is Abyssco's Leech. Reason for that is cold resistance. It's nice. A little bit of quantity is also nice. The strength isn't bad either. Uh, but the rampage is what makes me use this belt. It's just a fun little mini game while you're running the map over and over. It makes it a little fun, you know, to see how much monsters you can kill in an entire map. And you, the goal is to try to never let the rampage stacks end until you get to until you're done the map, basically, until you get to the boss or Alva, Valai. So, Biscos Leech, pretty good. Can be changed with uh, Headhunter for sure. Might give you more speed in the end. Can be changed for a Perendus Blazon, uh, I believe is what it's called. Uh, let's see. I think I have one. Perendus Blazon, yeah, for sure. It's even more quantity, and it also gives you all attributes if ever you're lacking intelligence somewhere. And a bit of Fire Res, which is nice as well. And like I said, more quantity. What I'm trying to do is get a Perennis Blazon like this one, 8% quantity. I'm not really going to matter too much about the at all attributes. I don't really care. But 8% quantity and then Valet in the in the temple for a 5% quantity implicit, which would give it a 13% quantity belt. If I can hit that, I'm basically like, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm. I'm using that belt for the rest of my life, pretty much. It's going to be insane, and I'm never going to sell it, and no one's ever going to get it, because it's mine, and get your own. <laughs> it's probably not going to happen, though, but oh well. Boots of my choice, for sure. Gold worms, no-brainer. Um, get as close as you can to 20% quantity. I couldn't get 20%, which really sucked, but 19 is okay. I mean, I guess 20% ones are basically four times the price. I could... I could honestly afford them at this point, but I already have the enchant, the 10% move speed if you haven't been hit recently, which is up 24% up of the time. So definitely not changing those. And get, you know, decent fire res. I'm at 48 here, which is alright. The bow is a wind ripper. It's a no-brainer. It's 15% free quantity by slaying frozen enemies, and you're freezing everything, including bosses. So, you know... You're not going to do with anything else than a Wind Ripper, but that is end game to the point where at first, like I said, you can start with a Chin Saw. That's what I, I was using for a long time. Just a 5 link Chin Saw would do you just great. It's probably going to cost something like 1 Chaos. Let's see. Uh, 1 Chaos. And then you can get a 5 link one for maybe, you know, just get the Prophecy. It's probably like 15 Chaos or 20 Chaos. So really cheap. It's going to carry you hardcore. The bosses are just going to melt with the Chin Saw. Really, really good. Then, um, oh yeah, for Endgame Wind Ripper, I'm trying. The reason I have more uh, more Wind Rippers, I think I have another one somewhere. I have like three. Uh, I'm gonna try to corrupt one uh, to get a plus one arrow Wind Ripper, which would be insane. They're worth like a hundred exalts, uh, and if you get like a GG roll, it's probably like a mirror. But you know, chance of that happening is really low. But I'm still gonna try. That's where all my currency is going in this league is to get a plus one Wind, wind Ripper, pretty much. Ring of choice for me is a thief storm. Get a 16% quantity one. It's basically the same as having two uh, two 8% venters. So you're actually losing 4% quantity, which is a big deal. But it gives you 32% up to 34% all resistances. 34% all resistances goes a pretty long way for how cheap these are. But in the end, I think for me. Um, I'm going to end up with two 10% Venters with a decent res on them, but they're pretty expensive right now. So I just decided to roll with this, but honestly, the more I think about it, the more I want to just go over to Venters right away. Uh, I think it's my resistances would just be really, really bad. Like, oh my god. Ugh. I need like... Ah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. 
End game, end game, end game, ultimate end game, you're getting two pariahs, white sockets, that's 30% quantity, which is the double the amount of this, basically 30% quantity on two rings is insane. So two pariahs with white sockets is the end goal. Uh, your, your chest piece is pretty much one of the only pieces of the build that's mandatory, because uh, of the unique passive on it 1% increased move speed per 450 evasion rating up to 100% so the goal with the character is to hit uh, 45,000 evasion right here it's maximum gives you 100% movement speed which makes you really 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 damn fast how are you gonna reach that evasion is mostly on the tree there's a lot of evasion nodes a lot of really good ones like this 12% 12% 24% 18% eight percent eight percent twenty four percent twenty four percent it's really easy to hit forty five thousand evasion honestly you're not gonna need you're gonna have a worse roll ever on your queen of the queen of the forest and you're still gonna hit four hundred fifty uh, four thousand sorry forty five thousand evasion with a chemist flask of reflexes get this as high as possible get a as close to one hundred percent uh evasion rating uh, because that's going to go a long way. A 60% flask will not work out. And don't use divines on them. Just re-roll until you get a, a better roll. It's pretty easy to get. So that's pretty much the only thing that's mandatory. You don't need a 6 link at all. 5 link will do you just fine. Same for the Wind Ripper or, or the Chinsaw. 5 link is perfectly fine. It's a T3 map. It's really easy. Uh, Talisman. Sorry, Amulet, we're going for a Spine Fuse Talisman. The stats on there don't matter at all. We're just getting 10% quantity. I was pretty decently lucky, I'd say. I got me a little bit of physical damage to attacks on there. A little bit of cold damage to attacks. and Nothing to write home about. But Intelligence uh, goes a long way on the build. It means I don't have to, put, uh, to take this 30% Intelligence node here to run things like uh, a Curse on Hit at level 20. It requires 111 Intelligence, so... It goes a long way, but it's not at all necessary. End game here would be a uh, Shaper Amulet I level 85 with a 10% quantity roll. Uh, some life, some intelligence. Like I said, I'm going to need that. Uh, what, what would be good, though, is to get a um, an Eggate Amulet, I believe, is strength and intelligence. That would be the base. I level 85, 10% quant, then you don't need stats on the amulet itself, so you can go pure damage and life. So life, crit multi, maybe crit chance, uh, fizz damage to attacks, etc, etc. That's insane, but those are going to be like just, just ridiculous amounts of currency, so you're not really going to be looking at that for a while. Um... Your quiver is going to be just about anything you need. I just, this is basically, when I was making my plus hour quivers, uh, all those, which were about two exalts each, but I'm getting uh, my Elrond 8 to multi-mod those, and then they're all going to get corrupted in the uh, in the temple, because I'm going for plus two arrow, which is like 100 exalts, but we'll see what happens. While I was making those, I uh, I got this one, and I, um, I regaled into like T1 life or something, or maybe I regaled into the crit multi, I don't remember, but it was, it was decent. So I just decided to use it. I put on some Tor attack speed. I'm waiting to have Tor 7 to just take off that 7% and roll the 12%. But for now, it's not possible, which kind of sucks. But oh well, 7% is fine. Uh, second piece of the of the gear that is almost mandatory is a Tornado Shot Fire Suit Project Secondary Projectile Engine. Those are really, really, really expensive. You're looking at something in between 10 to 15 exalts, depending how lucky you are or how unlucky you are and, and the prices at the moment, but 10 to 15 exalts for the enchant itself on a decent roll, Devotos. But it is so worth it. This enchant is insane. How Your clear speed is just going to go up because you're just off-screening everything. Your hours are going everywhere. You're melting bosses. It's really, really, really worth it. So after getting your five link queens and like a five uh, and like a chinsaw or five link chinsaw and just a random queen of the forest, get that. This is the first thing you should buy after having all the really cheap things, such as like sixteen percent, maybe seventeen percent a gold worm with no enchant, a uh, random biscos leech. Like this is the first expensive piece of gear you buy, and then you work on the rest. Do not go buying yourself a six link wind ripper without having two additional secondary projectiles on your helmet enchant because it's just not worth it first of all it's not worth it at all 
And second of all, uh, this is basically going to double your damage. The Wind Ripper is actually going to take away some damage uh, from a um, from a Chinsaw. Chinsaw is actually more damage. So just use your Chinsaw. Get this enchant as fast as you can. First Doctor you get, just sell it. Who cares? And get yourself an enchant like that because it's going to make your life so much better. So that's it for the gear, I guess. Yeah, that's it for the gear. I pretty much did mention, and this is the end game. Yeah, this is the end game. Like I said, the the end game for the quiver would be a shaped quiver, uh, like this, with bows, attack, fire, and additional arrow. Then you multi mod it, or you just get some natural mods on there, like uh, wed, uh, fizz, damage to attacks, life, crit multi, crit chance, etc., etc. And then you val them in the temple and hope for plus one arrow implicit. And if you hit it, man, you are set. <laughs> You are set. So, I guess that's it for that. The links, real quick. Uh, tornado shot. Greater multiple projectiles. Elemental damage with attacks. Pierce. Added cold. Crit chance. If you don't have a six link, drop crit chance. Or critical strike support. Sorry. Gloves. Or anything else, really. Those are all interchangeable. Uh, you're going to want a lightning golem for the speed. You're going to want... Uh, a curse on hit assassin's mark with herald device this is gonna first off help you with uh, power charges then it's also going to give you a little bit of sustain um, but mostly just power charges and herald device gives you a ton of damage uh, portal gem is always nice 20% one for sure why not I vowed this for the memes in the temple and uh, it hit level 2 which I've never seen that that was kind of weird but oh well I was hoping for a 23% quality one uh, Blood Rage is just mandatory. It's going to help you with uh, frenzy charges, a lot of moon speed, and a lot of life leech. Uh, faster attacks and blink arrow. I mean, you can take out faster attacks if you're missing a socket somewhere uh, to run like your grace. So just, just murder faster attacks, but blink arrow helps you a lot with moving around, getting away from tight spots and whatnot. For my single target, I'm using Mirage Archer, Elemental Focus, Tornado Shot, Wed, Greater multiple projectiles and added cold. Uh, on a five link, I would probably drop. Uh, which one is it? I think I'd drop. It's pretty hard to say. Maybe elemental focus. Um, or added cold. Yeah, I think I'd just drop added cold on a on a five link because it's what gives you the least damage out of all of them. But it's pretty nice because the Wind Ripper effect for slaying cold enemies, but on a 5-link, I'm guessing you don't have a Wind Ripper, so just drop added cold. And uh, th what you do is you're going to pop your Mirage Archer right here, and then you're going to melt the bosses with your Tornado Shot. So your Tornado Shot and your Mir Mirage Archer are both shooting at the bosses, doing pretty much the same amount of damage, and the bosses just kind of melt. Like, even T13 bosses really, really die fast. <laughs> Especially if you have like uh, your blood rage up with a lot of frenzy stacks, you're just melting things. Uh, so that's it for the boots. Yeah, that's it for that. And helmet, you're running haste. Well, the reason we're going with haste is because of Val haste. It gives you a lot of attack speed for melting bosses, and also a little bit of uh, increased movement speed, which is always kind of nice. Uh, we're going with grace. The reason we're going with Grace is because it helps us reach that 45,000 evasion cap. If we take away Grace right now, and I pop my flask, I'm only at 30 to 9,000 evasion. So we're going to need Grace to hit that 45,000 evasion, which is the cap for our Queen of the Force, 100% movement speed. So Grace is pretty much mandatory, can't really take it out. Haste is always, Haste is nice, but it's not necessary. Then, I'm running a cast, cast one damage taken uh, support level 1 with a level 3 immortal call. It's not necessary, but it really helps, especially in higher maps, because uh, 3000 HP is not a lot, and you just get one tapped. So that's really good. So that's for the links, that's it for the tree. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I mean, you can put the video on pause and just look at the tree. Those are just, all the jewels are just damage. Just a lionized fall. Uh, just damage, damage, some life. Yeah, just look at the tree if you want. You might have to take this node and this node for strength and intelligence. You'll see in due time when you start with the character. So I guess the last thing I want to talk about is the temple and the incursions. 
So this is a temple. Just a random one I'm running right now. <sighs> so I'm going to tell you what I think after running a shit ton of temples is what uh, is the best the rooms you should go to, the rooms you should not go to, uh, what's going to be the most profitable, and what is basically trash. So, the I'd say the 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 rooms I like the most is this one, uh, Locus of Corruption, because it gives you the Altar of Corruption, so you can get that, like I said, that 5% quantity belt, or that plus one arrow Wind Ripper, or that plus one arrow uh, Shaper Quiver. Uh, whatever it is, you can get it in there, which is really nice. But this is a gamble one. Most of the time, you're not going to get anything out of it, so it's not like it's not like guaranteed money. Then there's also the one that gives, lets you sacrifice uniques. Uh, I don't have one right now, but there's one that lets you sacrifice uniques. Um, that one, when it's tier three, it can give you things like headhunters, rigwall quills, just many, many really, really worthy items. But as I then again, it's just gambling. So most of the time, if not all the time, honestly, you're gonna get screwed. You're not gonna get anything out of it. So the rooms that really, really, really help you with money, uh, I would say, is the T3 map room. Reason for that, the tier three map room uh, gives you something like four chests, if I remember correctly, maybe it's six uh, full of maps. And if you're running only barrel chambers, your uh, your temple is going to be level 70, and a level 70 temple means level 70. Uh, level 70 temple, sorry, means level 70 on your uh, on your boxes, on your map boxes. So on average, you're going to get like a ton. Like average is a ton. I'm not even going to give a number, but it's a lot. You're going to get a lot of burial chambers from a single T3 map room, even in T2 with like four chests or whatever or three. Uh, it gives you a lot of burial chambers because it's basically the only map that's dropping in there, so that's nice. So the map room, amazing. Uh, the vault room, I go when it's uh, T3 because why not? It's T3 vault room is okay. I mean, I've never gotten an exalt or a divine or anything actually really worth it out of them, but they they, they do give you quite a bit of fusings, uh, chaos, uh, some sextants. Uh, some vowels, etc., etc. It's a pretty good room to go to. Uh, Fault's not bad. Um, the armor room is garbage. The gem room is garbage. The uh, accessory room is garbage. The gem workshop is garbage. The jewelry workshop is garbage. Most of everything else is garbage. The one that gives you just uh, a bunch of random items is also garbage. There's not many rooms that actually give you a lot of money out of the temple, but there is one room that is insane. <laughs> there is one thing you should prioritize in every single temple. You go for that if you can, and is it is the Tempest Generator. If you get this level 3, it gives you either uh, the Corrupting Tempest or the other one, which I can't remember, but it's, for me it's always the Corrupting Tempest. Maybe it has to do with the map level or maybe it's just chance, but... What it does is it gives you a tempest, which is basically like a little circle on the ground, which appears for something like three seconds, and then you or you have to go on it. And when you go on it, you get a buff, and the buff is whatever the tempest is. So for a corrupting tempest, you get a buff that that makes everything you kill drop corrupted items. And corrupted items are great because they have an amazing chance of dropping either six socket, but mostly six linked. So I have nine divines right now, and those were from a single, a single temple that I ran a T3 corrupted tempest, and I had every single room correct uh, connected. So I did the entire thing, the entire temple. Maybe take I'd say 15 minutes, maybe ish, because you're going super fast. Uh, nine divines. So if we're, to, if we're to do math on that, nine divines. How much are they right now? Let's see. Divines are 8 chaos each. So 9 times 8, quick maths. Uh, damn, I can't remember. I'm just kidding. That'd be 72, I believe. Uh, so 72 chaos in 15 minutes. To me, that's pretty nuts. That's almost an exalt in 15 minutes for one damn temple. So 
T3, T3 Tempest room is insane. You don't have to go in the room or anything, by the way. So as soon as you get in the temple, if you have a T3 Tempest room, you're going to see these red circles on the ground. And you have to be in them to get the buff. And the buff lasts for 5 seconds. And after it's gone, another Tempest appears, another red circle. So you basically have to try to go in there. And if you don't have the buff and you kill monsters, it doesn't count. So what I do is I get on in the red circle and I kill the mobs for 5 seconds and then I just go looking for another one. And sure it can be a little bit time consuming, but it is so worth it. It is insanely worth it. So I guess, yeah, that's probably the room that I'd say is the best. Uh, it even gives you the the drops that the, the boss gives are actually corrupted as well. Which can be actually really nice because the boss gives some pretty pretty sick loot sometimes with like some crazy mods so since they drop corrupted sometimes they drop like rare and you can have some pretty nutty items going around so this is uh, my favorite room in the temple in my opinion it is broken as hell especially with this kind of quantity we're running 66 percent quantity my goal is to drop this ring um get a 10 percent venters because i'm going to really need the resistances and then get a pariah for 15 percent so that'd be 25 so i'd be adding nine percent quantity so 75 and then my i'd be at 90 percent quantity that would probably be the end game goal two priors would be even better but 95 percent quantity is all <laughs> i mean 90 percent quantity that's that's a lot of damn quantity so i think i've went over everything i think this video has been going on for a very long time i'm not even sure but i also think uh, there's a lot of content in the video. I'm basically going about everything I've done in the last week, how I built my character, the ascendancy. I went through through everything really. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the comment. As always, uh, if you've watched the entire video and you're still there listening to me ramble, man, you're amazing. Uh, I hope you get a shit ton of doctors because you do deserve them. Uh, if you clicked out of the video after like five minutes because you're like, man, this guy talking is really boring, that's okay too. But you won't hear what I'm saying right now. So, best of luck to everybody in this league. It's an amazing league. I'm. My goal this league is to get a plus one wind ripper, plus one arrow wind ripper, and a plus one uh, shaper quiver. Which, those two together are 200 exalts. But I'm doing it solo self found, so I want to do it myself. The only. I'm not actually going to do it solo self on because I'm going to have to buy wind rippers, but basically I want to corrupt everything myself and whatnot and not buy them. So we're looking at my goal for this uh, this league is something like 500 exalts, I want to say, which is a decent goal, I think. I think it's not bad. It's probably 50 doctor cards. So yeah, that's the goal for this league. I hope you guys have some pretty nice goals as well, and I hope you succeed and reach them. So best of luck, happy hunting, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Also, if you have any um, any things you'd like to have uh, more details on, or like how to sustain the map pool, or how to build the map pool, or what I'm doing with uh, other things, anything really. If you have any questions, feel free to ask him. I'm going to respond to everything I can. And uh, yeah, best of luck, I guess. I'm pretty much done rambling. Later.